um, the diagnosis of epilepsy falls on a very wide spectrum. So um, when someone's diagnosed with epilepsy, it's not do these things and everything will be fine. Some people have seizures um, every day and some people will have seizures once or twice a year. So it really varies on um, sort of the severity and the frequency of the seizures as to how it will affect somebody's daily life. Um, after an initial diagnosis, some people will have to change very little about their current lifestyle, whereas other people may have to make very significant changes. Mm -hmm. um, however, we encourage people to learn about their condition, um, find appropriate medical treatments, and really create a very supportive network um, and continue doing the things that they find joy in because all of those things are will help to lead to a very positive quality, quality of life despite um, the severity of the seizures. Um, again, it kind of depends on the specific person, so how frequently they have seizures um, and how severe their seizures are. Um, things like rock climbing, bungee jumping, skydiving, obviously all of those things um, if somebody's interested in doing that, um, they have to be very cautious about those types of things. And those types of things are probably not recommended for somebody who has epilepsy, even if they're having very infrequent seizures. Um, but things, you know, regular sports, football, soccer, basketball, soccer, all of those sports are, are encouraged um, because it's also has been shown that people with seizures who are more physically active are actually less likely to have seizures. Um, epilepsy can definitely have an impact on all types of social relationships. So seizures in, in, in themselves are very unpredictable. So a person, unless they have an aura or a warning sign, really have no idea one morning if they wake up if they're going to have a seizure that day. So that unpredictability and that, um, you know, loss of control can really impact social relationships with friends. Um, with family, with teachers, whomever, because that person might be afraid to um, go play a certain sport or participate in a certain activity because they're afraid that, well, what if I have a seizure? Parents probably face a lot of, um, you know, fear, um, anger, a lot of um, loss of control. Um, it's we find when clients come to us and their parents of a young child with seizures, um, they feel, they watch their child have a seizure and they have no control over what to do. There's nothing that they can do to stop the seizure. They have no control over when their child is gonna have a seizure. So there's a lot of frustrations, a lot of fear, sadness, um, because you wanna help. You wanna be able to take those seizures away, especially if it's your child. However, we really encourage parents to talk with other parents, so to kind of connect on a peer-to-peer -peer relationship um, and share with each other strategies and things that they do to help cope and help make the diagnosis more manageable um, and to kind of reduce that fear and that stigma. Teenagers probably face the most um, in terms of when you're reaching that age of 16, you're wanting to drive. Um, when you're finished school, you're looking for employment. So those are probably the biggest barriers or the biggest struggles for teens are um, wondering whether or not they're gonna ever be able to drive um, and definitely wondering whether or not they're gonna be able to sustain any type of employment. Um, those tend to be the most and then of course, if they go off to school, there's, there's lots of parties, there's lots of drinking, there's lots of socializing, staying up really late, and all of those types of things kind of um, don't mix well with epilepsy, right? People with seizures have to be really cautious about how much they're drinking, how late they're staying up, you know, the activities that they're participating in. So there's definitely a lot of struggles and a lot of barriers for teens, um, and those are probably the most common. Um, there definitely are, um, probably within the schools, um, employment especially. 
So a lot of the times people will um, be at a job and they won't have disclosed that they have seizures or perhaps they don't even have seizures yet. Then all of a sudden they have a seizure one day, their employer finds out, the next thing they know they've been fired. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that that's completely against the law, right? That you are not allowed to be fired for reasons of having a seizure. Obviously, there are certain occupations where um, a person with epilepsy would be unable to do. However, that doesn't mean that accommodations can't be made within the workplace. Um, so we're definitely still seeing um, discrimination in society. However, again, um, you know, part of what we do as an, organi as an organization is to help educate employers um, and to help share with them sort of what epilepsy is, what seizures are, you know, and how valuable it can be for them to have somebody on their team who has seizures and how much information that they can learn from them.